Hi, my name is Christian Luscher and I'm a professor at the Department of Basic Neurosciences at the University of Geneva. In my lab we study the neural circuits underlying motivated behavior. And in today's video abstract we're going to tell you about the project where we study the interaction of two brain regions to control food intake. Feeding is an essential behavior required to sustain life. Of course we eat to maintain homeostatic energy demands but feeding must also remain flexible to respond to immediate changes in sensory or environmental conditions. Owen O'Connor, a postdoc in my lab, has been investigating how two brain areas, the nucleus accumbens and the lateral hypothalamus, or LH, interact to control feeding behavior that may override immediate metabolic needs. Research spanning the last two decades has revealed that inhibitory output from the nucleus accumbens shell to the lateral hypothalamus plays a key role in controlling food intake. However, these two structures are quite heterogeneous. Output neurons of the nucleus accumbens shell are inhibitory medium spiny neurons, but can be separated into two distinct classes based on the type of dopamine receptors they express. The lateral hypothalamus contains inhibitory neurons, but also excitatory and neuropeptide releasing cells. We wanted to understand who talks to who in this feeding circuit and make a causal link between activity of identified cell types and feeding behaviour. First, we used neural tracing to understand which accumbens neurons project to the lateral hypothalamus. These experiments were performed in mice that were genetically engineered to express a fluorescent reporter protein in the different cell types. We found that more than 90% of accumbens cells projecting to LH also express the dopamine D1R, identifying them as D1R medium spiny neurons. Next, using slice electrophysiology combined with optogenetic targeting of specific cell types, we confirmed that the D1MSN to LH connection was functional and dominated over the D2MSN input. So, D1MSNs project heavily to LH, but what is their role during food intake? To answer this question, in collaboration with two members of the lab, Eve Kremer and Clement Rona, we performed single unit recordings of optogenetically identified D1 or D2 medium spiny neurons in mice that were freely feeding a liquid fat solution. We found that most D1 MSNs in the accumbent shell reduced their activity during food intake and increased their activity at the end of feeding. While these experiments show a correlation between D1 MSN activity and feeding behaviour, we next wanted to demonstrate causality. Using optogenetics in freely feeding mice, we either stimulated with channel rhodopsin or inhibited with ARCH 3.0 specific cell types in the accumbens to LH circuit. To summarise these experiments, we found that inhibition of D1 MSNs but not D2 MSNs increased food intake and prolonged feeding even though mice had free access to food in their home cage. We also found that stimulation of D1 MSN terminals in LH rapidly suppressed feeding even when mice had been food deprived for 24 hours prior to the test. In the final series of experiments, we demonstrated that GABAergic neurons in the LH were a functional target of D1MSNs and that direct inhibition of these GABA neurons was sufficient to rapidly stop feeding, even in food-deprived mice. Taken together, using a combination of electrophysiology, tracing and behavioural techniques, our study helps to resolve the molecular identity of the accumbens to LH feeding circuit and demonstrates that the function of this circuit can rapidly override immediate metabolic need to control food intake. There's a clear evolutionary requirement for neural circuits that can quickly stop or prolong feeding despite immediate metabolic needs. However, in today's modern society where tasty and energy-rich food is readily available and in absence of threats, these circuits may actually work against us. For example, maladaptive signaling in the accumbens to LH circuit could contribute to feeding disorders by forcing the premature cessation of food intake in anorexia or by favoring repeated and prolonged feeding bouts of palatable foods, eventually leading to obesity. Our ongoing research in the lab is focusing on these questions in the hope of revealing new rational treatment options for feeding disorders.